Hi everyone, welcome to a new video. I hope you are having a wonderful Sunday and that you're doing well. For this video, I will be walking you through how I draw some cheesecake. And if you want to tag along, just grab some reference photos and we can get started. I will be using some pencils, inks and watercolors, but I will let you know as I go through my drawing what I am using. So to begin, you can just grab a pencil and we can get started. In the sketching phase, I like to start out with some more vague drawings, I guess. I like to do some random lettering, some random sketches, and only then I decide to do more serious drawings. In the sketching phase, I just really want to make sure I know what I'm doing, so setting up composition and lettering, and I just want to make sure as well that all of my drawing does not stick too much to my references. I have to keep in mind that references are someone else's creation, so I cannot copy that, unless you're taking your own photos, of course. But yeah, I want to make sure everything I do kind of sets apart from my original references. I also want to make sure that my idea translates well into paper, because that can also happen. Sometimes you have an idea, and it sounds really good until you are actually try to execute it. I'm also doing some lettering for this drawing and that is particularly hard for me, so I want to make sure that I get it right and that everything looks okay. If you're not used to doing lettering, what I can recommend is just to look up some types and fonts and try to replicate them for yourself and as time goes on, I'm sure you can get the hang of it. Once I'm done with the sketch, I will prepare the paper I'll be drawing in. Uh, personally, I like to buy big sheets of paper and cutting them down to the size that I want. Here I am using some Arches uh, watercolor paper. It is the brand of paper that I like the most. But again, that is really personal. Just try different brands and eventually you will find something that you actually really like. Once I have everything ready, I can start to actually do my sketch. Now you have different ways of transferring your sketch to your final paper. You can use chemical paper, you can use a light box, or you can just draw it again from scratch. Here I am drawing it from scratch, but I personally prefer using a light box. Unfortunately, mine is broken, so I can't use it, but it's okay. As long as you can get rid of the sketch, that's fine. I'm using some rulers here, and this isn't absolutely necessary, I just want to make sure things aren't centered weirdly on the paper. And I also am doing some lettering, so I just want to make sure things are well spaced and making, making sense. At this point, <laughs> you can realize there's something weird on my drawing, and that is the lack of an N on my Valentine's Day. So this is uh, something that happens a lot. I'm doing lettering and I completely forget 
it actually means something and that it's not just a drawing. And I only realized that my valentine missed an end when I was coloring this drawing and I almost gave up, it's so embarrassing. <laughs> oh, but it's fine, it happens, it adds character, I guess. And I hope you find it funny, at least. Otherwise, when it comes to inking, which is what I am doing here, I recommend that no matter what you are using, you do really light lines. And this is because you still have your pencil sketch. Once you rub it off with an eraser, you might make some of the lines fade. So don't put too much effort still onto your line art. I am using an oblique pen holder and a nib I like, but you can really use anything that you prefer. If you rather go for fine liners, I would recommend the Winsor & Newton ones. I really like them, but you can really use anything you prefer. As long as it is waterproof, it's what matters. If you want to start using pen holders and nibs, I can recommend you to start with a pen holder that feels comfortable. It doesn't need to be an oblique one, it doesn't need to be just the regular old straight one, just as long as it is comfortable for you. As for nibs, they are somewhat cheap. There are some expensive ones, but mostly they are cheap, so just buy a bunch of them. You can even buy one of those starter packs and start scribbling and see what you like, because uh, again, some of these mat materials are really personal and you can only discover what you enjoy using the most if you try them. As for ink, uh, just make sure it is waterproof and that's good. For me, I'm a little bit picky because some inks dry and leave like a texture and I don't really like that. So I'm using Dr. PH Martin's Black Star Matte Ink. I really like this ink. It's quite seamless, let's say, and it also dries to be quite matte, as the name says. But again, as long as it's waterproof, it's all that matters. Once you erase your sketch, you can just go ahead and start detailing your line art. You can add shading, you can add hatching to it, and that's it. In this phase, you have a good guideline because you already did your lighter line art, so you can add as much detail as you deem fit. So now that we are done, we can move on to our watercoloring. I am using some Sennelier watercolors. Uh, if you're not sure what watercolors to try, I would either recommend Vincent van Gogh or maybe some Winsor & Newton student grade watercolors. Usually they're all quite nice and you only start noticing a difference in the brands once you get more used to and experienced with watercolors. In an earlier stage, uh, I recommend you also add really light washes and that you start looking for colors that you might see in reflections. So you can see I added a lot of blue to the jam and that's because I see a lot of blue in the reflection. Adding colors other than the one that is the main 
color of an object will help your product look a bit more rich and a bit more delicious, I think. <laughs> uh, something that's really important, important in food illustration is texture and color. And I think going straight to a brown, for example, might make the drawing a little too bland or unappealing. So adding greens, blues or purples even when you see them fit might really enhance your drawing. Once you have your light layers done, you can start adding more pigmented washes because gem is something so strong, you don't really need to be scared of adding a lot of pigment. You can go a little crazy and start adding really dark and saturated layers because Again, you're not drawing something really light, like milk, you're drawing jam, strawberry jam. You can jam out to it. when you are doing some food drawing or any theme at all, you should define a point of focus. You want people to focus more on one area and that area is the one you'll detail the most. If you try to detail all of the drawing, it might look a bit too much, it might be a little too overwhelming and it might lose its appeal. So I recommend you focus on one particular area. And for me, that will be the strawberry and the jam. Because the cheesecake is so light and so delicate, I don't want to over detail it. It might make it look too busy, so the jam will be my focus. It is also a way to cheat, I guess. Focusing on an area that is already quite detailed will make it easier than trying to force detail upon something like cheese or cream in your cake. <laughs> So the reason why I like watercolor so much is because you can really play with water and stretch out the color. You can lay down a really saturated path and then use a damp brush to try and make it softer or try to expand it a bit. And I think that during doing food illustration, because you are forced to play with textures, is really nice to train that. You can try and learn a lot of watercolor techniques on a single drawing. And if you never draw or if you're learning how to do food illustration, doing something like a cake can be really useful. Again, bear in mind, your cream is the delicate part, do not overshade it. You can add some really light texture marks on some areas, but you do not want to overwork it. Keep it clean, you already have your area of focus in your jam, all you have to do is add some little details and you're good to go. And that's it. This is our cheesecake drawing. I even made some cheesecake for it for the first time. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was useful in any way, shape or form. <laughs> and I hope you have a nice day. See you all later. Bye!